So one of the things that's been kind of challenging is that with it being difficult, more difficult with the coronavirus pandemic to get to the grocery store, um, we run out of fresh produce and it's hard to get produce oftentimes in a lot of neighborhoods but there's one thing that's growing in your yard that's really easy to harvest and maybe a little bit more complicated to make if you've never made it before but uh, we're gonna show you how today and it's uh, it's nopales. The first thing you want to do is look for the youngest paddles and you can recognize them because they're lighter green than the big tough ones which are older. They are tender and the spines are not fully developed yet. They still do have little stickers, so be careful. Just hold them in between the, the sticker area and you'll be fine. Um, but they do have little stickers, so watch out. Next, of course, you want to wash your hands. 20 seconds, sing happy birthday twice. Then what you wanna do is get your paddle, cut the tip off, and then start cutting around the edges of the paddle because there's a lot of stickers that are right around the edges and the easiest thing is just to uh, slice around the perimeter there to get them. And then all that you have left is the ones on the main faces of the paddle front and back. And those are maybe the most uh, kind of intimidating part to get off, but they're really not, it's really not that hard if you kind of get your technique because the stickers are on top of this little raised bump on the paddle and all you really got to do is just run your knife blade up against them and they kind of pop right off. And it doesn't matter if you hold the paddle with the stickers pointing away from you or, or pointing towards you your knife is just going to catch those bumps in, and it's just going to come off like that. It's actually really satisfying to do. And there you go. Now what you want to do is wash the paddles off once you've gotten the stickers off. It's kind of like cutting your hair first and then washing it. Um, you want to rinse them and any little stickers that might have been left behind, that's a good way to get them off. But usually uh, I've noticed that there's really not anything, no stickers on the paddles by the time you, uh, you pop them off with your knife. Um, I should mention that just inevitably I always end up with just uh, one or two little stickers in my, in my fingers, but they're they don't hurt really, they're just annoying, so kind of have some tweezers maybe at the ready just to, to pull those out. And if you're nervous about the possibility of uh, eating some stickers accidentally, don't worry, it's never happened before when I've made nopales. Next step is to just start slicing your cactus into little strips. And this part is also really satisfying because if you've picked the right kind of paddles, they're very tender and they slice really well. It really doesn't matter if you cut against the grain of the cactus. There's not really a grain, but it just doesn't matter like if you cut them vertically, horizontally, diagonally. They all slice up really well. Okay, here we are with our nopales, and now it's time to start slicing up the other stuff you want to uh, add to your nopales while they're cooking. This is a good time to kind of clean out your refrigerator. The basic stuff that I always like to add is onion, and I like to slice. You, you could dice it too, but I like to slice it into thin little strips, and uh, tomato. Usually I might do just like half a tomato, but today I'm going to do a whole tomato because this tomato is getting pretty soft in my fridge and I don't want it to go bad. So I'm just going to use the whole thing. And then I also have some chiles that I had chopped this morning, but I didn't use. And uh, it would also be nice to be able to add cilantro if you have it. Um, we don't have it today. So I'm just going to do those three things, the onion, the tomato, and the chiles. 
You can just dice up that tomato like that. Here it is in the pan, ready to go to start cooking. You're going to grab your oil, olive oil, canola oil, whatever you got. And then you're going to add your nopales, your onions, At this point, you're going to put in your tomatoes. And I'm actually going to wait on the chiles. I'm going to add them at the end, both because um, I like them a little crispier and not super soft. And because when you're cooking chiles, it can really spice up your whole kitchen and make it hard to breathe sometimes. All right, now we're going to start cooking and we're going to add some vinegar. It can be apple cider vinegar. It can be white vinegar, just a little bit and we're gonna add some salt. And actually, if I was gonna go back and do this recipe again, I think I would probably, instead of just plain salt, use like a bouillon cube or something, veggie bouillon or chicken bouillon or whatever you like to use if like a, that adds flavor as well as salt. You're gonna set your heat to like medium, about six, stir it up. And, and what the, your goal at this point is to get all of the babas to come out. So the salt is going to extract the moisture and the sticky, um, like the babas, the, the, the saliva, the sticky, kind of like okra. It's very slimy. So you want to get all that slime to start sweating out. And then the vinegar, the acid, as well as the acid in the tomato are going to start breaking down that slime so that when you eat it, it's, it, it, it doesn't taste slimy anymore. It's just tender and uh, delicious. So here you can see after a couple minutes that the salt is beginning to draw out the moisture from the nopales and from the tomatoes and uh, it's starting to get kind of liquidy, starting to get some of those balas coming out. After another couple minutes it's even more liquidy and you can start letting the cactus simmer and get softer in that tomato-y liquid. And you just want all of that liquid to cook down, basically. So let it simmer without a lid or anything like that for a few minutes. So now all of your liquids cooked down. It's a dryer. And in the next step, what you want to do is add water and then let it cook down, let the liquid evaporate again. Okay. So here we go with the water. And you're basically, I don't ever measure it really, so it's just enough. You don't want to like um, make a soup or anything like that, but you want to get enough in there to kind of, I think of it as like washing off the babas, washing your cactus, um, because that's the other thing in addition to the acid and the heat that's going to break down that sliminess is just having it kind of um, rinse off a couple of times and, uh, and cook in that, in that liquid. So here we go, we're going to let it cook down again. This time we're going to put a lid on top of it and turn the heat down to simmer it maybe like two or three. Now it's cooking down again. It's, it's getting sticky. It's getting drier. And I'm actually going to add another round of water to rinse off that cactus, rinse off the nopales again. But the cool thing about this recipe is really that you can kind of just, you know, your mileage may vary. Like maybe it's ready to you at this point. You just want to eat it. I like to think, oh, if I soak it a bunch of time, if I add more liquid and, and kind of saute it for a long period of time, it's going to get very tender, it's going to get very flavorful. But this is not a recipe that, you know, I grew up making. I grew up eating it out of a jar. So it's not like it's a traditional, you know, passed down from generations kind of thing. This is just something that I experimented with and this is how it works for me. So it's really flexible however it works for you. Okay, now it's time to add the chiles. 
because we're nearing the end. And this last round, I'm just letting it cook down without a lid again. I have the heat turned up a little higher so that it cooks down more quickly. Because by this time, you might be starting to get impatient. You want to test it, see if it tastes good. It's ready. And it's ready. Get it on your plate. So there you have it. That's how you make nopales. And tonight we're going to have it with some leftover papas and frijoles from breakfast this morning. But you can eat it in a lot of other ways. It's, it's totally vegan the way we made it tonight. But uh, you can eat it with meat. You can eat it with eggs. You can put it in tacos. It's delicious. And the best part is it's totally free. It's just from your backyard. So get picking.